There's a lot of potential uses for NFTs, non-fungible tokens. You have obviously digital collectibles, things like that. Imagine baseball cards and Pokemon cards, but on the blockchain, verifiable, immutable, digital ledger, right? It's honestly a beautiful thing. Forget counterfeits and all that stuff. We can verify it all on chain. Then there's in-game assets, right? Think of all the skins you can wear in video games. Oh, look at my cool hat or look at this cool skin I got from my gun or you know, weapon, whatever. All those are cool because we can put the power back into the player's hands by making them NFTs. We can ensure that, say, Blizzard, which hasn't really had the best track history recently or for really like the last decade, but we can make sure that say, hey, they're not just minting extra rare skins and whatever else they wanna do. If, for example, there's a limited edition drop, there's only supposed to be 100 of these skins, we can verify that on chain. And now there's another interesting use case for NFTs that's popping up, and that would be books. What if you put digital books on chain? And at first you may be like, oh, okay, yeah, why, wow, whatever. Okay, so when you buy a digital copy of a book with say Amazon, well, if Amazon bans your account, see you later. It's, it's really like the problem with buying digital anything. You buy a digital download game, you don't really own it, right? You, you If you have a physical copy, you own it. If you have a physical book, you own it. If you have a physical video game, you own it. If you have a digital copy, if you lose that key account or get banned or whatever else, see you later, it's all gone. You also can't resell digital copies normally. So putting all these things on chain is a beautiful thing that will help people retain their money and their ownership. And that's why I think there's a huge pitch to basically turn all digital books into NFTs. That's what we're gonna be looking at today. As always, nothing in this video is a financial advice. Also, I'm a doge dad, not your dad, so whatever you choose to do is your decision and your decision alone. A quick news here is that the Binance Smart Chain rebrands to BNB Chain, BNB Beacon Chain, Chain, BNB Beacon Chain, and BNB Smart Chain. I'm going to assume that you know what MetaMask is, have it set up and have it synced up with the Binance Smart Chain if you want to participate with this cryptocurrency project that made today's video possible, and that's going to be NFT Books. It's a project about NFTs for ebooks, books, magazines, and articles. And off the rip, I'm interested, I'm excited, I'm curious, but are there any red flags? Is this project really worth it? Are they really going to make tokenizing books mainstream because that's what i'm interested in in particular but what i see here is buy some tokens let's look at why was nft bs born so books are important knowledge treasures for everyone because books record the knowledge and values of life yeah problems book industry is similar to the publishing industry a 20 movie production industry can watch hundreds of movies but how many books can 20 dollars buy so they say the solution here is that helping readers to read a book worth up to one 100 or one 1000 cheaper without having to spend time searching for pirated books so they hope to help investors to gain profits and contribute to society so i'll be honest initially that's pretty vague we see some graphics that you know are not scaled up properly here but let's let's dig a little bit deeper, right? So cheaper to cheapest, fair share, highly scalable. How do you become an NFT booker? Um, all right, well, let's launch, launch the app. All right, let's turn the shields off. A few moments later. All right, app launch isn't working all that well. Well, let's go ahead and look at their token here. So we got NFT books, symbol NFTBS. I, I just don't think BS is really ever the move. It's it sounds like both. I don't know why they just didn't grab the token ticker book or books. Does anyone have that? Per coin gecko, no. Neither of those projects, neither of those tickers are taken. So why did we settle on NFT BS? The settlement has been here nonetheless. Down 70% from their all time high tracked on coin gecko, up 5,000% from a tracked all time low. Let's look at the 24 hour volume on pancake swap per. CoinGecko, $33,000. Let's go ahead and pull up their token here on BSC scan. We can see over almost about 50,000 addresses holding this token with over 200,000 transfers. That's actually very high. 
Let's go ahead and open up Poo Coin here. Ridiculous name, useful tool. So per Poo Coin, we have a market cap calculated of about $18 million. The liquidity is not that high, coming in at $340,000. That's still not nothing. Uh, but yeah, it's the liquidity. We would definitely like to see more. Zooming out of the chart, we can see a Bart Simpson followed by an, an increase and then a decrease, and then we have a slight increase. So by crushing all the technical analysis here, I can determine that in the future, this cryptocurrency price will either go up or it will go down. Trust me, I'm a professional, okay? Yeah, look, you know, all these technical analysis guys, they make more money by you getting liquidated on Bybit than than the YouTube ad revenue or, or whatever else, just to be very clear on on that one. So uh, buying tokens on PooCoin is really easy. I already have my MetaMask set up, like I mentioned earlier. So let's say I wanna punch a test transaction through, it'll calculate the slippage I need. So when I go to complete this buy, we see it pumps up the slippage to 14%. That means we have some hefty token taxes at play. I am going to lose about 30% of my tokens, most likely, between my buy and sell. So you need to go up 30% just to break even. And actually, it's a little bit more than that because of the way percentages work out. What you get and how that goes up without, you know, droning on and on, talking, you know, too much number nonsense. So let's jump back to the project here. We look at the token, the token distribution. Transaction fee, 4%, but then why was my slippage all the way up to 14%? Let's take this at face value. Let's go over to PancakeSwap, the biggest decentralized exchange on the Binance Smart Chain. Like Uniswap, but for, or no, no, so the BNB chain now. It's a BNB Smart Chain now. Uh, but regardless, um, that trade I just made through PooCoin actually just routed me through PancakeSwap. But this will make it a little bit easier or maybe a little bit easier to visualize. And I just want to show you buying on another exchange as well. So they say that the, the token tax is only 4%. So that means 5% will definitely get it done. So let me go and punch in 5%. Error. Right, 5% didn't get it done. Well, surely double the amount would get it done, right? Error, it's not getting it done. Let's, let's bump it up some more, about 12%. Does 12% get it done? Error, okay? So we bumped up to 14% like uh, PooCoin had. And at that point, it allows our transaction to go through. I rejected it because we've already done that trade. Um, but that's interesting. All these high token taxes on so many different Binance smart chain tokens, BEP20 tokens, I normally just leave my slippage on 20%. It puts me at risk for being front ran and a couple other things and just being exposed to high slippage, but it makes trades, well, they pretty much always go through, as you probably would guess with a 20% slippage. Um, so. So really what, what I see here is that this is right on their homepage of their official website. We see something that is just wrong. It's wrong. Um, so we let's, let's look at the breakdown though. So a very annoying pie chart here. This is very annoying. But so we see burn when launched. They burned 20% of their supply. They had a whopping 1% airdrop. 4% goes to the developer, 20% to marketing, and 55% added to the liquidity pool. NFTBS was released to the public um, almost a year ago. So it, that's that's a while ago. I don't see any other docs here, you know, really anything on their homepage. I pull up their Medium page. It's linked on their official site, 404. All right, so I dug around and I got the correct link to their Medium. A quick scroll isn't really finding what I want to find. So let's look at their team page. We see some animated pictures. But animate, an animated picture is fine, right? As long as you know, we've got some real pictures attached and associated with it. The Twitter goes to their official Twitter account. The LinkedIn goes to this page. Well, you are not your own business page. But then there's Chow Nguyen. Look at a tad AI generated. One endorsement from someone from their own team here. Uh, luckily, she's out of the U.S., right? We've got Vi. V-Fam. Excuse me. V-Fam. 
So she looks a little bit more legit than the other ones. But I do think it's really odd to have NFT books in your username. Uh, I mean, maybe if you just made the LinkedIn because your company wanted you to, you know, create a LinkedIn and just kind of have that presence because it is something people look for here in the crypto industry, right? I mean, I, I have a LinkedIn. Um, I don't really update it. You know, I don't really care. I've got a thousand videos with me in it. That's not really a question of if I exist. I, I definitely exist. When we're looking at projects to potentially support, use, invest in, right? I, I want to make sure these people are real. So I I'm not super inspired by this team page uh, personally. I found this on their YouTube. I like the way it's kind of the digital digitalization of uh, the book here. This is kind of cool. This is fun. Um, we get a little, it's like we're reading the back page of it, kind of get that little about section. You know, then we see a couple of reviews pop up. It's moving, it's dynamic. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's very classic 3D animation. We see the light going across. Uh, I think it kind of fits here. It's overall a little bit fast. I think like that could have been slowed down at 10, 15 more seconds. Um, but you know, I do, I do like that aspect of it, right? Uh, but uh, for me, for me, the big takeaway here is that I think this is an incredible concept, super useful and should be happening. But NFT books just leaves too many questions and holes. Well, why is it so hard to find the documentation? Why do you say a 4% tax, but I paid a 14% tax on my buy-in, right? I mean, what is the selling process like? You know, I didn't even cover that. Let's, let's run that back. Um, so let's go ahead and flip the script here. And so let's approve that I can spend these tokens on PooCoin. Um, it's going to cost me 13 cents per MetaMask. MetaMask makes about a million dollars a day uh, or more from the data that I've been able to uncover. And yet they have the most basic bare bones looking uh, application here you've probably ever seen. So on my swap, it's bringing up 14% slippage. So again, you know, that's 14 in, 14 out. When you pay 14% on tokens that you have now 14 less than right it's actually more than 28 percent that's kind of the percent thing i was referencing earlier uh so i mean these are absolutely massive token taxes that just aren't really properly explained i mean how can you have huge token taxes and not break it down right we go to safe moon okay you know who really popularized the token taxes and so we're here on their main page and we scroll down and what's some of the first things we see because that's really like the most notable thing about this project. 4% in reflections, 3% LP acquisition, 2% token burn, 1% growth fund. So basic math, we add that up, that's five and or three and two is five, four and one is five. So we have 10% taxes in and out, okay? Four simple functions occur during each trade. All right, and it's just, it's clear, right? And you can hate or love token taxes, but the fact is it, it needs to be very clear and it's just not here. Um, so that's the scoop. I think NFT books has an incredible concept. I, I would love to see uh, this be brought to market, but I think that their project is just way too heavily focused on their token and not actually creating a usable viable product. You know, that, that's it. Remember, Voscoin is not a shill. It's a third-party review. So slap that subscribe button and watch our review video tomorrow because we're uploading daily. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment. I can't talk any faster than this or start sounding like Eminem. Just kidding. There's no way I can talk that fast. Goodbye. I'm done. Seriously, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow. Please be advised. There are scammers impersonating us on multiple platforms. I don't want your money, I just want you to smash that subscribe button. Everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only. That means it's not financial advice.